Welcome back. This is the second video in the set of Microfocus CICS Web Service Provider from WSDL demonstration videos. In this video, I'll give you a quick tour of the Enterprise Developer CICS COBOL demonstration project that I've loaded into Visual Studio, and then walk you through the XML code in the project's WSDL file. Later on, I'll use the WSDL file to generate CICS Provider Web Service components. Here in the Visual Studio Solution Explorer, I've loaded a demonstration solution that contains a project named Reverse. It's named Reverse because in the end, the CICS web service that I'll generate from this project takes a text string, reverses it, and sends the reversed string as output. The solution was created using the Microfocus mainframe subsystem template, and the reverse project's properties have already been configured to generate CICS COBOL to run on an enterprise server region on a Windows platform. I'll show you some highlights of the defined configuration by pulling up the project properties. Here in the Solution Explorer, I'll double-click Properties under the reverse project. Traditionally, CICS COBOL code would use the EBCDIC character set, but in this case, since Enterprise Server will be running the web service on the Windows platform, the character set is set to ASCII. The provider application needs to be generated using CICS COBOL, so the exec CICS box is checked. This output path sets the location of the generated application's compiled components. This demonstration project uses a specially created project subdirectory named loadlib, specified here. It's not strictly required for CICS, but I've decided to use this simplified output path because I find it convenient. And that's it, so I'll close the properties window. Back in the project, I'll now show you the WSDL file that is used to generate the web service. To open the WSDL file, I just expand the WSDL folder in the project and then click the file. WSDL files are written in XML as you can see here. This particular WSDL file, named reverse.wsdl, describes a web service that sends a SOAP request and receives a SOAP response from the application. The first two defined elements, reverse request and reverse response, each define a structure for the data passed to and from the web service. Each defines a string array with a max occurs of unbounded, meaning that the number of string elements in the generated array is not limited, and a min occurs of zero, meaning that the array itself is optional. As you'll see in a later video, the value set for the size of the array is important with regard to generating a CICS web service that processes data using channels and containers. This is the type of web service that I intend to generate. These message elements each define one part or task performed by the web service. The first defines the input and the second defines the output. The port type element combines the two message elements into a single request and response operation named reverse request. The information in the binding section defines the structure for the mappings generated in the WS bind file for the reverse request operation. For this demo, it's also important to know what information is contained in the service section here. You can see that the name of the web service is not surprisingly, reverse. This is the name Enterprise Developer gives to the CICS COBOL provider application that I'll generate in the next video. Notice also the specified SOAP address. I'll use the information in this address in a later video when I configure an Enterprise Server region for the web service, because this is the URL where SOAP sends its requests. This first part identifies the server on which the web service is running. In this case, the server is local. This is the port number that listens for web service requests. When I configure the Enterprise Server region, 
I'll define a TCP IP service resource for the CICS web service requests and set this port to listen for them. And this final part is the path that tells Enterprise Server what application to invoke. When configuring the region, I'll install a URI map resource that defines this path and associates it with the provider application. When a request is received, CICS will match the received path to the path defined in the URI map and then invoke the associated provider application. In the next video, I'll use this WSDL file to generate the components for the web service, including a CICS COBOL provider application program and a WS bind file that contains the SOAP to COBOL mappings. Mm -hmm.